Live from the Za and Chosatorium in Pasadena, California, GameSpot presents The Hot Spot. And now here's your host, Master Rich Gala. Hello, everyone. It's Wednesday, January 11th, and that means once again it's time for GameSpot presents The Hot Spot. Still, your very only audio source for all the hot topics from the world of video games. I'm your host, Rich Gal, featured producer of GameSpot Live, and we are joined once again. By Jeff Gersman, senior editor. Hey, Jeff. Uh, the very only Jeff Gersman. Yes, is, is, that's my new title. Yes, yeah. it is a it is a super great day here on the hot spot. You we got are that joined right. by Carrie Gusko, speech editor. Hey, Carrie. Hi, you took my thing. What were you gonna say? I was gonna say I'm doing super great. How are you doing, Carrie? I'm super great. <laughs> Brad Shoemaker, editor, is here as well. Hello, Brad. Excelsior. The voice made for radio, Brad Shoemaker. Hi. I'm also glad we have you here today, Brad, because, uh, you know, the show happens on Wednesdays. Last week, the moment we were done recording is when CES was picking up in Las Vegas. You were there. This time last week, I was in Sin City. We're going to talk about it right now, and we want to know what went on there, Brad. Nothing. Exactly. (laughs) Sony and Microsoft both had presences there. They both had uh, keynote address. First, let's talk about Sony. We were expecting some big things. We are hoping for some big things. Maybe hoping. something new on the PlayStation 3. Instead, what do we get? Uh, PS2. <laughs> they, talked, they talked about the system that's been out for like five years. We got prongs. We got many prongs. Exactly. And they, they updated some media download stuff for the PSP. I mean, it was all kind of small time. You know, they're, obviously the CES is not really the forum for them to be revealing big things about the PS3 because that's later in the year. We got E3 and TGS and whatnot. So. Yeah, they're too busy talking about Blu-ray and all their big movie plans and the networked home and carting out Ron Howard and Tom Hanks. But, I mean, yeah. when we're talking about CES. You have to remember that's not really the forum forum for big video game announcements because it used to be at, a, at one time like Jeff, a decade ago yeah, yeah. I, was about to say. I went to ces days. back when back when there was no e3 ces was you the, old the spot. old man you we went to chicago in june and vegas in january and we liked it <laughs> there because there was a lot of places in chicago that would deliver pizza and hamburgers to your hotel and you could throw whole pizzas out the window me and ryan mcdonald actually threw pizza out the window and landed it on the security camera that was looking over the parking lot. We tried to drape a blanket over it, and then we threw so Kaz Harai came out <laughs> paper and, uh, a waste of good pizza. He showed yeah. some footage of uh, PlayStation 3 games that we'd already seen before, and he said, uh, the next generation doesn't start until we say it does. But but didn't they indicate somewhere they indicated that it's definitely going to be 2006? Like, I mean, we know this, right? He did say that the console is, quote, a key pillar of Sony growth in 2006. Right. So that's like our big, like, everyone's jumping on that. Like, oh, my God, it's, it's, it's definitely, definitely, it's it's very only definitely coming out. It's pretty great. In 2006. It's super great. It will be super, super great, great if it comes out. But you know what's kind of funny? I was thinking about this is, um, you know, there was this time where the companies would come out and they would chart out their big thing and it, for Nintendo would be Mario like we've got Mario and right. Sony would be like we've got Crash and so now it's gotten all like lame and like futuristic and Microsoft's like well we've got HD DVD and Sony's like well we've got Blu-ray it's gotten kind of boring for me yeah totally because it's it's just not about the games really right you know, it's about they're, they're super high tech yeah. They're they're just catering to this mainstream audience now that doesn't really care about the the name of the game or anything like that. They just want to know what it's going to do, what it's going to do for them. Is it going to? There's no more heart. Well, I think the weird thing movies, is yeah. you say they're catering to a mainstream audience and they're making these consoles five hundred dollars or you know four hundred dollars and you know your add on yeah, your yeah. external DVD. Well, guys. I mean, thing. what what's mainstream about that? Nothing. Like you're trying to make this the center of the media experience. You're trying to have everyone get it. You're trying to like pull in you know people the family that wouldn't play yeah. games normally with bejeweled but you're putting bejeweled on a 400 dollars console how does that pull in ultimately they're going to try and spin it as a value because it does so much you don't need anything else you don't need a standalone blu-ray player because this thing does it and that's going to be 1800 dollars for a standalone we learned blu-ray that player focus is really what counts here you like you would think think okay <laughs> that they would have learned that focus is what counts i mean if the gizmondo is in the indicator <laughs> right no yeah exactly or the end gauge for that matter i yeah. mean the end gauge was like in theory it was a good idea it was like yeah. you got an mp3 player you got a phone you got your sure. games on here it would be great if you didn't have to take the battery out to put a new game in right well or, i think that know. that's the difference is that the end gauge didn't do any one of those things well at all right whereas you know, i use it as an mp3 player all right 
Well, that, yeah, that's one thing it sort of does, but you know, mm-hmm. a dedicated MP3 player is certainly better. Well, while I'm going to cut you guys off because I can tell this kind of thing is going to pop up again in just a couple minutes. Yes, sir. But right now, I want to talk about the one last kind of good news, kind of exciting news about the Sony PSP that was mentioned at CES. And there's, what's this? What's this Connect Music download service all about, Jeff? It's like uh, iTunes and Xbox Live Marketplace all rolled into one for the PSP. They'll be able to sell music and movies and and games through it. Presumably, it'll all be protected to prevent you from giving your memory card to other PSP users or something like that. But then that means you, what, can't take your movies off? So you, you download a movie, you pay it like $10 for it. Sure. And, and then you, you watch it on your PSP, your PSP. You watch it, and then you you get rid of it because you want to download a different movie and you don't have the money to buy a $500 memory card and then... Well, it, it, presumably this would have some kind of PC component that you would have an iTunes-like library of your purchased content so that this you is can one then thing we're not put on, seeing, put off. Yeah. We're not seeing a lot of this connection. Like, we know that the PSP can connect to things because I actually, I did it for one of the games we were reviewing that the PSP connects to the PS2 for, for one of the Ratchet Jack games. Uh-huh. But, like, no one's talking about this. Like, why, why haven't we, you know, that the PSP could connect to your PC or it could connect to your... Well, you know, I p- put movies on my PSP via the PC a lot, but it's, it's yeah, it's not something they're really touting because I just don't think they've found a way to make it easy enough for the average consumer. So you and that's what the goal with this, this is, right. is to just make it really easy, just like plug in your PSP just like it was an iPod and go. The pro- and, the, and yet the big problem is that there is no 30 to 60 gig hard drive on the PSP. That's the You're problem. stuck with your 32 megabyte memory stick that you got with it or you spend 200 bucks to get... Well, I think, don't they? They have four and eight gig memory yeah, sticks an eight, coming. That was one of the things they announced is, is an eight gig. How much is stick. it? A uh, trillion dollars. Exactly. Yeah, take a guess. That's worth it. So when you, you're you running out of the house, you know, and sometimes, you know, I'm like, oh, I really want to listen to this song. So it takes me like five minutes to, you know, get like everything set up exactly. for my song. Yeah. Like, I really want to watch Point Break on the way to work today. <laughs> yes. So it's going to take me an hour or whatever to, you know. It's like, Johnny Utah <laughs> oh, I, I, on I, the go. I, I, have a, I have a question. What if Sony diverted some of these R&D resources to making PSP games. Oh! <laughs> oh no, you didn't. Well, yes. whatever. Yeah, I think the uh, storage problem will be alleviated one way or another. Yeah, we'll see. When they have their hard drive. Will, the, will, it, will there be a new PSP? Sure. Is that what you're saying? I don't know. <laughs> An external HD DVD for the yeah, PSP. Yeah, exactly. External Blu-ray drive for <laughs> PSP. Well, I mean, N- Nintendo, Nintendo has made its own industry out of redesigning its products and reselling them to the same people. So. Yeah, and you're right. the only two people in the world that bought the Micro. I, I like my Micro. <laughs> I, use, I, I play I, my micro far more than my PSP. Brad, I'll say you, that right instead now. of your micro, you should be playing more luminous so you can stop getting stomped. I, oh, no, no comment. I think uh, that, that is not appropriate for this forum. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, all those analysts all along have been saying, Sony's going to come out with a hard drive PSP, blah, blah, blah. And it, it sounded crazy at the time. But you know, now with them talking about doing stuff like this, it makes a little more sense. And how big would it be? I mean, if the iPod can I mean, handle 30 gigs... I yeah, don't... they could put a flash drive in there that would be... Yeah, the, you know, the, like, look at the iPod or Nano. Eight, or yeah. they, or, or yeah. the size of the Nano is minuscule and it has 4 gig. You know, they could, yeah. they could make or it they happen. Could, or they could just straight up put like an iPod size drive in there and put a 60 gig drive in it if they really wanted just to. Just take out the battery. That and you thought, plenty yeah, of room. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You thought the battery life was bad already. <laughs> yeah, wait until it's spinning a hard drive, too. And an optical disc. Right. Yeah. Awesome. All right, enough about Sony. Let's talk about Microsoft. Do we have to? Yes, because <laughs> they didn't really announce too much either. Nope. <laughs> well, they, they made the most important announcement. I know, they didn't of make the biggest get, No, we're saving that. Before we get <laughs> to right, that, right, Brad, right. before we talk about the obvious thing. I was just talking about Texas thing, Hold'em. <laughs> before we talk about Texas Hold'em and that Street Fighter 2 thing, Brad, what else did Microsoft do at CES? At their keynote, related? they had Bill Gates dancing with Justin Timberlake. Awesome. And they also announced that there's an HD DVD drive external coming out for the 360, which squashes all the rumors that they're just going to put out another console with that drive added internally. Oh, but but, but it doesn't even matter because that drive isn't even for games. That drive is for it, movies. Strictly for movies, says Peter Moore. Ridiculous. Sure, senior Vice President of Marketing. Well, Ridiculous. whatever. If you if HD DVD did catch on as a format and you didn't want to pay the full price for an HD DVD player and you already had an Xbox 360, you could just go get that drive. That if, if, if right, the price but, points line up the way they're saying they will, that is a good point. Yeah. If, I mean, it, if it's significantly cheaper than an HD DVD drive. But that 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 even assumes that HD DVD is the dominant format. Right. It exactly. Won't be, it, it won't it's be. Just this isn't on, the HD era. I'm going to say that right now. This it, is it's not the blue era. The HD the blue era. era. It's the blue era. Coin that. Copyright it. Yeah. <laughs> Blueera.com. Trademarked. Dude. 
Oh, get on that. Uh oh. Patent pending. <laughs> Patent pending. <laughs> so basically, that, that, that's all it was. They said that there will be an external HDD DVD drive, and they said over and over again that no, it is not for games. Right. Right. Well, which is smart because if they did that, then not only would you have systems that may or may not have a hard drive, you'd have systems that may or may not have an HD DVD drive, and that's just one too many weird Sega CD like 32x add-ons. And also during work. during CES, uh, Peter Moore told the Japanese site IT Media that a Blu-ray peripheral is also a possibility, depending on had which to tell the Japanese wins. something. They, well, they, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And to their to their credit, they are uh, they are respecting the fact that the format war is ongoing and that HD DVD might not you know it might not come out on top and they might be making the wrong choice, but. I think I think Moore gave us a line something to the effect of ultimately the consumer will decide. So he said, actually, yeah. the the full line is, "I'm old enough to remember Betamax. The consumer in the end will make the decision." And I'm old enough to remember Betamax. And Peter, so Moore's Peter Moore's like, at least twenty six. Yeah, is what you're saying <laughs> exactly. He's at least like twenty four. He, he, he is. Yeah. And actually, we did just look up uh, Betamax on Wikipedia and. The Betamax VHS thing, that went on for like 10 years More on the, than on 10 the years. consumer front. And beta tapes are still around. They use in professional video aspect and television. Yeah, because it was TV better quality, just more expensive. Exactly. So, Do you think he broke that out to be like, remember what happened with Betamax? Exactly. Sony lost Sony on that lost, one too. You know? but, but whatever. <laughs> I mean, this is not something that's going to be solved anytime soon. I would imagine not within this current generation of, or the, the current next generation of video game consoles anyway. <laughs> during the well, blue generation? To, It'll well, be solved during the blue generation. Well, you let have me to, tell you. You have to remember that this is more important for the movie industry than for gaming. I mean, exactly. The DVD sales or, what are, or home movie sales, I should say, are what are going to be most impacted by the, the, the format that they settle on. So Yeah, and, and I actually think that this is going to be a really short format war because no everyone like Peter Moore remember, remembers Betamax and, and knows how horrible that was and what a process that was. So I think you're going to see sides maybe a little quicker to concede when things aren't going their way or you know maybe the hardware manufacturers that are supporting one over the other would be quick to flip flop. I think you could see, yeah, if Blu-ray took off, then yeah, Microsoft probably would put out a Blu-ray drive, and they'd be like, "All right, here, this is this is the thing now." Sorry, but you're not going to see all three major manufacturers coming out with Blu-ray consoles or HD DVD consoles. Not True. yet. True. Maybe yeah. maybe five years from now when the next consoles are rolling that's, out. That's when. That's In fact, almost assuredly. Yeah. yeah. True. Probably. All right, Jeff, hit us with it. The biggest news of CES, at least according to several GameSpot editors, was what? New paper shredders. Dude, these <laughs> things shred paper like crazy. <laughs> CES is insane. And they also, did you see those trucks? They had subwoofers in them that threw for blocks, homie. Talk it was st- on hit. Street Fighter 2 for the Xbox oh, Live. Oh, no, yeah, that's you, pretty big, too. You achievement point junkie. That's pretty big, too. I'll be able to get a full 200 points out of Street Fighter 2 <laughs> hyper fighting. What is it going to, I mean, like, I think Bill Gates kind of said it off in an offhand manner during the keynote, right? Yeah, basically. Or, or, or Peter, Moore, Peter Moore actually Peter Moore said someone, it, but yeah. they, they just kind of threw it out there. It didn't make any big deal out of it, but we were all floored in our chairs, and we, like, gripped the armrests as soon as we heard that. Cause... And everyone else is like, like, whatever, man. Get on to showing me the Windows Vista. I want to see DirectX 10. <laughs> Please show me what the new UI is going to look. Yeah, whatever. Um, yeah, Street Fighter 2 Ooh, is Why they got to be nerds, to... huh? Oh, yeah. She, what, I love, she got made fun of last week. I for love UIs. Voice. I love UIs, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I love UIs. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> Damn, man. All right, so it's going to be an Xbox Live Arcade. Yeah, and uh, it's they're basically adding like the DOA style um, more than one player, more than two players in a match mode, but they're calling it quarter mode. I love that. Yes, uh, yeah, I was putting my quarters up right yeah, here. Put your quarter I up. hope you see a quarter on the screen. Yeah, be, like a quarter you, with your name on it. Exactly. That'd be really funny. You know what, but I don't want them to spill that stuff. It's the kind of thing where it's like, if people kind of got hip to the the, the, the the lingo, like quarters, and too, then it's sort of like... Too late? Well, I know. Arcades are dead, so you know nobody's going to know about it. Shut otherwise. up, right. man. I still I'm old arcade. enough to remember quarters and Betamax, oh. and let me tell you... I, you can still, like, pool tables, I guess, they're still the quarter etiquette. Oh, yeah, they're, yeah, yeah, they're definitely the yeah. sure. quarter etiquette. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, but they, so, they stole that from us. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, totally. pool is totally pool, a new pool's thing. totally new, it's yeah. Like, <laughs> arcades were totally... It was like the biggest game in 2004. Tables. Yeah. But the, the, thing, the thing with uh, Street Fighter 2 is that they haven't necessarily come out and said... This is going to be an arcade perfect port of they have. Street Fighter 2 Hyper Fighting. I don't know that it's been publicized, but courtesy of the head guy at Microsoft Casual Games, uh, it's a requirement to be on Xbox Live Arcade that it has to be fully up to Xbox 360 standards. It has to be HD. Okay. It but, has to play online. Yeah. So, But I'm, I'm more meaning like this could be the weird anniversary edition oh, right, Hyper right. Street okay, Fighter 2 yeah, instead of Hyper Fighting the arcade yeah. game, which is what it needs to be. Uh, so th- they could still pull a fast one and mess this up. 
up. Did they disappoint you with Smash TV? No, but I mean, what did Capcom have to do with that? Well, I'm just you saying, know, keep Capcom the faith. over and over again has somehow That's managed to mess true. up Street Fighter. So the reason you get a game like Street Fighter Two is because you're targeting a specific demographic, right? Like and people are going, "Dude, Street Fighter Two, which is like very all hard, I heard around the office. But, yeah, but the thing is, is like most of the people that played Street Fighter Two when it was big, like I'd say the majority of them wouldn't know or care. So right. it, it is like the minority of us that are like, don't do Champion Edition, don't do World Warriors, do Hyper Fighting, don't do Super, don't do Super Turbo. And to those kids on the forum, they're saying they should do uh, Street Fighter Three Third Strike. You're all crazy. <laughs> so there it is, Street Fighter Two. Before we move on, uh, also they did demo Fight Night Round Three. There is the demo available on Xbox Live right now for Xbox Three Sixty Owners. That looks really good. Yeah, it's that fun. game looks crazy. And there were some other games on hand, right, Brad? Uh, a few, but it wasn't anything we haven't really seen before. I mean, Burnout Revenge for 360 okay, was there, except, wasn't it, dude? Ex- except for that one. That was the thing that made me go like, man, I should have not gone on vacation. I could have gone to... Uh. And Sin, right? That was- Sin, yeah, Sin Episodes, which is finally the reprisal of Sin, after, or the, the revival, I should say. Can Sorry, it, after, JC? Yeah, 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 that one. <laughs> That's, that's the one. All right, yeah. for all of our coverage of CES, go to GameSpot.com slash features slash CES06. It's all right there. We've got interviews, movies. You can watch the totally staged Bill Gates, Steve Ballmer, Fight Night fight. Awesome. Now that we've told you about the serious part of CES, there's also some weird things that were going on there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we got DirecTV, oh. we got iRiver, we got Philips, and we got this weird knockoff revolution controller. Let's hit them real quick. Uh, who knows what I'm talking about? I do. Well, one of the things that I, I was interested about specifically was the DirecTV thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so DirecTV is talking about getting together like gaming tournaments uh, in conjunction with like television programming, et cetera, et cetera. And so what they were trying to do is capitalize, I guess, on the popularity of gaming tournaments and, and you know, sort of bringing that into the mainstream and you could sort of, you know, you're hearing a lot of this now, getting people to watch other people. We were saying that in the Street Fighter yeah. thing. Like, you can watch people playing Street yeah, Fighter like, and then oh, put your quarter up and it'll be so like the arcade. But dumb, because <laughs> I could be playing games instead of watching Well, right, exactly. Games. And I think one of the things that just struck me about this in particular was that, like, I don't know if the people at DirecTV know competitive gamers, but I used to be really big into sort of competitive Counter-Strike. And I know a lot of people people through that and yeah because Did you just say gamer by the way competitive yeah okay yeah that's fine why no you said gamer as we, need like, to we need like a buzzer for every time yeah. someone says gamer. Oh, okay. Yeah, a competitive so, game uh, player? A sure. buzzer, and then it says, go work for marketing. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, there's all these hardcore gamers. And uh, no, but so I've met these guys, and they're all, you know, they don't strike me as people you want to watch playing. Right. One of the reasons I quit playing Counter Strike, besides the fact that they screwed that game up, was because the people that play that game competitively and very seriously are a bunch of jerks. And like yeah. you don't get a lot of people with good faces out there. You got uh, Cornelia is is amazing, and she's mm-hmm. a real breath of fresh air. Yeah. And but then you've got someone like Fatality, who's I don't want to talk. I don't want to see him. I don't want to know about him. <laughs> I'm talking can't. about like uh, t- learning about gamers profiles and stuff. Like you get to know them, and you you know it'd be like American Gladiators, yeah, like, where you'd be I like, I want f- ice to win, you know. Or I whatever. play for 15 hours a day in my mother's basement, and I'm really good at Counter Strike. The only now. the only thing that I know about Fatality is that he can't seem to appear in a magazine with a shirt on. Really? I don't want to know that. I yeah, don't care. exactly. No, it's true. And, and he's always he's always shirtless. These video game competitions are getting bigger and bigger. There was just that massive thing in Singapore. The World Cyber Games, yeah, that yeah. one. There's a lot of video online. You but can I mean, stuff's been too, going on in, in in Singapore in that region for yeah. a long time. And yeah, mean, World Cyber Games been going on for a few years. Yeah. And with people like Directv and they're and they're teaming up with like Microsoft for it. I mean, all these people with all this money getting into it. So at some point, someone's going to say, "All right, let's invest some money in a couple image consultants who are going to give these people the J. Allard treatment." You know, that'd be even better because that would, know, be, be, so would be, creepy, be so creepy. So that would be weird. tragic. Yeah. Like, they're th- they're Sports are huge. They're on TV all the time, and it is well documented that there are some athletes out there who are jerks who you don't want to hear about, and there are people whose job it is to handle them and make them appear as someone little kids but, want to be so like I, when I they think, grow but you, up. But not everyone can play sports, and, and it's true you can't play competitive gaming on the same level, but I think playing a person who doesn't play Counter-Strike competitively but plays it on their own is going to get a lot closer to the experience than someone who plays backyard football. Well, what I'm saying is that you're worried about you don't want to see these people on TV, give them a couple of years. Well, and I'm saying we have I, no I think, other choice that, with the know, athletes. The, the, you're you're going to appeal to a very niche audience of people that, that already know about these games. I don't think you're going to pull people in right. that don't know about the games. And those people are just going to be like, whatever, jerk face kid plays games all day. I could do that. Whatever. His, <laughs> with his no shirt and his frosted tips. I'll get in there and beat the crap out of him. Forget the games, man. 
You know, that you're just going to get that mentality and, it, and it's not going to work. But I think the interesting thing about the DirecTV uh, information is that they're actually working with Microsoft to integrate services. So DirecTV split with TiVo. You can't get an integrated TiVo DirecTV because now they're making their own digital video recorders that go in their satellite boxes. Uh-huh. So the deal is now with this deal with Microsoft, you're going to be able to transfer stuff off of that box onto your PC, onto your plays for sure based portable devices and onto the Xbox 360. What the heck is a plays for sure based it's portable a Windows, device? It's like a Microsoft brand for like portable video or audio device that, yeah, that it automatically it. works with Windows Media. Speaking of format wars, we're looking Looking at a nightmare with all these different devices coming out, totally. different, different download services, different formats, different standards. Like nothing is going to work together. Yeah, you're going to see like a billion different like biz dev deals of like, well, now we made a deal with Directv, yeah. but not Dish Network, and not you know, it's 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 going to be really crazy. But I have Directv and an Xbox 360, so. If I can use my Xbox 360 as like a dummy terminal to watch recorded uh, shows off of a direct TV box, that's kind of cool, provided it works with all the HD stuff. Because uh, TiVo Series 3 isn't coming out until later this year, and that's one of them. That's when I'm going to switch to like all my HD satellite stuff. Sure. Whatever you say. Yeah. Up next, we have the iRiver portable game device. What is the G10? <sighs> uh, <laughs> dude, who knows, man? I mean, can, can they manage to get the MP3 player? that they have going like a little more out there in the market like stick with stick with that the already you know we've got ipod and you've got iriver are those sort of the two major ones that i can think of yes internet water is very big yes what so, <laughs> basically it, there are some shots that leaked of it uh it is a iriver is a korean company it's this little thing that looks kind of like a sidekick with a flip screen is that the one yeah. that i mean i've seen people using the mp3 player all the time is that I'm the just one saying, that really they I, show it they I, show it playing like a mario kart knockoff yes yeah, so yeah, yeah. they show it playing a screenshot was it like wizard cart that game for the new one are they just Porting that to that so it can be on every failed system in the world. Yes. Great. <laughs> but so anyway, so why are they making a game device? Because it because it features Y Bro wireless internet functionality. Y Bro, Bro internet functionality? Shaka, dude. Dude. <laughs> what is Y? Does anyone know what Y Bro is either? Broadband Y Y Bro. Y Bro. <laughs> it's Y Bro. <laughs> so so we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Now, this next thing looks really cool. It's the Philips uh, en- Enter Table. <laughs> T I. T A I B L E touchscreen board game table. It look it does look cool. That it looks really cool. cool. Yeah, but you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of those commercials I've been seeing a lot lately for those things like I think it's called Seen It, where it's like this this thing that you put in your DVD player. And it's mm-hmm. like a game for the family. I, and everyone I am nasty sits, at Seen It. Sits around. You can't touch me. See, I, this I don't has even know about this. Nothing to do with Seen It. Seen but It I'm basically shows you a movie clip and say. It, say it's Jurassic it Park. It reminds me of these games where you're like you've got these sort of or like the the. Pac Man in the in the joystick oh, type yeah, of yeah, game. Yeah. It's like this game where a person doesn't want to buy a system. Yeah. But they want to like play video games. So you sell them something where it's like contained within. It could be an interactive desk. It, it, that, where yeah. students or colleagues could work together on a project. Is that not awesome? Or or it could it be used for like cool. crazy holographic chess where you move the chess pieces around and whenever you take a piece, it plays a wicked animation and heavy metal music. That would be pretty cool. I can't that wait. would be pretty cool. I mean, I'll buy it, but I'm just <laughs> <probably>. <laughs> no, that's because I'm just because I'm stupid. I like I but my actually yeah. my favorite thing about this was this real super derogatory comment. He says this contrasts completely to the solitary, isolated environment encouraged by some contemporary comments based electronic games and that's so it seems so negative so yeah. you're saying like, that i can't play the enter table by myself because i don't you know because you're because you're not one of those codependent looking for validation type right, people exactly. you need to like, play with other people this is like oh great i'm already a board game jerk maybe i'll get an electronic <laughs> board game hey guys i brought trivial pursuit over we can have a fun night i like don't, your don't not cranium though cranium no, I, <laughs> I will house anyone in this entire building we're going scrabble. to hang out at my oh, place I'll play you in scrabble dude will, and we're going to play some boggle and, play and then later some up words if you're up for it <laughs> but yeah I, I don't charades i don't know it seems like with all these things they're trying to like pick somebody who isn't already a gamer and be like you you want to be a gamer but you want to be our kind of gamer you want to be our electronic board game i gamer. don't understand that mario and <laughs> you know, luigi nonsense you know like with than the y, halos bro? and the <laughs> what i like better than why bro as my phrase as my favorite phrase out of ces was split fish yeah. Oh, I didn't even hear that. Where's that from? Splitfish Gameware is the company that's making the oh. kind of fake oh. revolution control for the PlayStation 2 that has a laser and it's like the next it's in two parts. And, <laughs> all right, can yeah. I use the laser to like kill people? Is yeah, it? you totally can. We're already unsure of the revolution controller. Yeah. You don't need to start knocking it off right now. All right, fine. All right, well, let's move on then. Uh, that's, as I said, all the craziness from CES. That's a lot of stuff from CES for something that didn't really have that much to do with video games. That's because it's like, it, 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 like technically had something to do with video games, but it's all nonsense. It is. Just wait for GDC and E3, I guess, huh? 
Yeah, Dice and GDC. All and these things are coming up. We'll have more about it. But GameSpot.com slash feature slash CES06. Here's some big news. Halo 3 is super great. It is. It's super <laughs> great. Uh, Bill Gates has told Engadget that his comments last year to Time Magazine that Halo 3 will counter the PlayStation 3 launch was a bit premature. Duh. And uh, <laughs> it won't be coming out until it is it is done. Yeah, did, did anybody, did anybody I'm anybody sorry. That? I'm sorry, guys. I was pretty dusted when I was talking to <laughs> Time Magazine. <laughs> like, did seriously? So, did anybody really take that seriously? No, no, no. no, no. I, I mean, I, a lot I of people did. did but I actually thought, you know what? That's a smart. It makes marketing counter sense. Move. Yeah. It's like, and, all right. And depending PS3? on when the PS3 ships, it still could happen. Yeah. But it's not like a guaranteed thing. Yeah. But uh, anyways, the quote is uh, that we're loving. It, Bill Gates said, it's up to the team at Bungie when they want to ship Halo 3, and they're going to take their time to make that a super great product. That is the quote. He then went <laughs> on to say that Halo 3 was going to have why, bro, support. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Shocker. And now, I mean, people, if you want to take a guess, you, dude, you know, we're gonna get some chose and we're gonna play some snipers. What do you think? Will the game come out this November? Will come out in 2007 when the Halo movie drops? What are, what are your guesses? I think November. That, that I think sounds, November. I think yeah. 2007 sounds more realistic. I mean, they obviously proved with the last Halo that they're willing to take their time and not rush it. I mean, Bungie is and not have an ending. Yeah, they also proved yeah. with the last Halo that they don't need to spend a lot of time working on Halo. So yeah. I heard in the next Ooh. one you get to play as the giant psychic. <laughs> flood plant thing <laughs> that'd be sick i heard you get to play as david cross awesome <laughs> <laughs> as the whiny marine all right let's talk about one more xbox 360 game elder scrolls 4 oblivion the game which jeff said for weeks that would not make the launch and now it's been uh, kicked to march apparently <laughs> i didn't know about this rumor there was a rumor that it was going to be on nine dvds yeah that's just, i mean that was almost like a joke it was like dude the elder scrolls games are so massive yeah that this one's going to be on 500 CDs and like you're gonna have to like wire it into your like brain like Johnny Mnemonic style in order to play it like Enough it's just a- Keanu Reeves references please oh yeah we're doing really <laughs> well with this today. I-, I think it was just that I think that was a way spun out of control rumor based on the fact that the Elder Scrolls games are notoriously just massive and-, and and this game still will be massive but it only needs to be on one DVD because one DVD can hold nine gigs of data and that is that's massive. kind of a lot I think one of the previews I read said it's gonna have 16 square miles that was of- mine yeah, is that they, told, they told me that. Yeah, yeah. That's so. what they said. You're so I mean, proud. It, 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 <laughs> yes, yes. They told me that. I took notes. <laughs> That's <laughs> big, right, Brad? I write real good. Yeah, 16 square miles doesn't sound like that much in real world terms, but you know, if you that's think so about crazy. it, that's that's pretty big for a game. I wouldn't want to huh? walk around 16 miles. San Francisco, yeah. the city's only seven square miles. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, they, obviously, that's they can crazy. pack a lot in there, but they did say that you'll be able to kind of warp around the places you've already been. So, whatever, yeah. man. I think the part of the charm of the Elder Scrolls games is like feeling like hopeless and lost and like everywhere i go the enemies are utter 50, tedium 50 non-stop. levels like, higher yeah. than yeah well I, I didn't know what to do with morrowind so i just stopped playing it yeah well I, w- I would just wander around and be like oh this is cool and then something really big would come and kill me and i'd be like i hate this game i just want somebody to tell me what to do i don't want to think well then, but then <laughs> to do that you have to like dig through the 800 page strategy guide and be like okay what page am i on what to do if you get lost after <laughs> completing this quest if you walked east <laughs> turn to page 400 it's just like what ah whatever Ooh, text adventure but Elder yeah, Scrolls choose game. your own adventure, Elder Scrolls. That would be so awesome. <laughs> that would be good. If you shut the game off, <laughs> you patent, are dead! Patent pending, patent pending. All right, let's talk about another game that appeals to the nerd and all of us here then, because there are people right now who are very upset at you for for knocking Elder Scrolls 4, I can tell. But, uh, <laughs> it looks pretty. Tetris for the DS. Now, Tetris is going to come on nine discs. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, They're releasing an HD DVD add on. That's crazy. Yeah, the yeah. DS doesn't even take discs, so yeah. that's going to yeah, be pretty be, awesome. Yeah, the HD is, I said, the HD DVD add on yeah. for the DS. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, Nintendo's making it, apparently, and it's going to have like extra bonus modes and. That, like, have, like, that are like Mario themes? Yeah, there'll be a bunch of like what? different like graphics and backgrounds Wait, and themes just, and stuff. Just so we can reiterate, I mean, has anyone really given a damn about Tetris other than the first, like, than Tetris? No. So what? Wh- why? Why do we keep doing this? Why do we keep player online Tetris World? I don't want to play online. Isn't there a great I want to play Tetris, on our site for Tetris World by myself, yeah. Yeah. and I want to make the freaking Kremlin take off. That's all yeah. I want to do. So what? Hopefully, one of the themes in this is just straight up the Game Boy graphics with put the Kremlin on the top screen, and That'd it just plays awesome. the the original Game Boy music. That's and what my they nerd need to heart do. is beating. Yeah, dude. And that's I- what they need to do. <laughs> and I, I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't. I mean, uh, yeah, exactly. Should they totally. Should. If they're, I mean, yeah, they're gonna have like a Mario theme, like a Zelda theme. Ad hoc, don't think ad hoc 10 player ba- bouts but wireless only four like wi-fi yeah. but not why bro not why bro, bro. But, aren't they but saying that we'll be on the wi-fi which network. i have to say why bra yes, why not yes, have Brad. 10 players are, stop stop <laughs> aren't, aren't, okay aren't they saying that the touchscreen is somehow going to factor into the gameplay now i mean obviously yeah. you don't want to mess with tetris but 
I can see no, it being something like where you tap the screen No, they do want to mess with Tetris. They do want to mess with Tetris. They're like trying to reinvent well, maybe water. Probably, it's probably just something dumb like you tap the screen to determine which player gets your garbage. Or it might be somewhere like you tap the screen to spin it and then you can drag it down or whatever. But, and, but then you actually just don't play like that. And yeah, and it, it, it has nothing to do. And the, the fact that Tetris is one of the greatest simple games, it's like trying to reinvent water. It's like, leave it. Water plus caffeine. Well, so that new 50 cent vitamin water? Like Yes, Formula 50 <laughs> that's vitamin what, that's water. What, that's what these are. That's what these, these these additional Tetris games are. They're like the 50 cent vitamin water. It's, it's kind of grape like, flavored. It's well, pretty good. Well, seriously, it's like no. flavored water. It's not water anymore. Like you mess with Tetris, maybe it's not, it's not Tetris, Tetris anymore. 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 And you know, since it's Nintendo messing with Tetris and not a third party company, I have faith that it will be a good game and we will all enjoy it. And Fine. they're going to call it Tetris Drop and Squares. Drop and Drop Squares. And squares. Drop very and squares. good. Thank you. You should definitely patent that. Dragon I Shooter. The, uh, nice. <laughs> All right, we got two last stories. Let's hit them real quick because we're running a little over on time. Uh, not that we have a time limit, but <laughs> there's a New York City councilman. I'm not going to say his name because that's just what he wants, but he wants Sony to pay $20,000 for those graffiti ads we've been talking about, saying that although Sony did pay legally to use these spaces as advertising uh, for advertising, that uh, this guy says that children are impressionable, and if they see a wall with graffiti on it and they don't know that it's done with permission, it could very well lead them to believing that it's okay for them to do it. Whatever. Maybe they would actually do good graffiti then instead of like yo mama sucks like all you know just like be like beautiful artistic graffiti there's some really good looking graffiti murals in new york there's nothing wrong with promoting it as an art form are they famous basquiat the basquiat one (laughs) yeah you know what and everything rich gallup everything coming out of new york is famous uh, I know including, including <laughs> Harry Goose Goose. including yeah. much, much like the graffiti yeah I uh, think the, the crazy thing here is that it, finally the admission came out that they actually paid for all these spots because I, I know we talked about it like a month ago or something that you know Sony had put up a bunch of they put up a bunch of fat burners they put up some pieces one, one color right. throw ups two color throw ups four color throw ups uh, that's what I usually see yeah they've actually the, been around since November if you believe that yeah time so, flying yeah so they did all that but apparently they paid for it and it wasn't all creepy all along it was just a dumb, it's just like, it was just dumb basically yeah. uh but yeah whatever they're not gonna pay that they shouldn't have to pay that no this new, york, this new york city graffiti guy isn't it the same dude that came out against getting up i'm pretty sure it is yeah probably it is it is the same guy that's, that's yeah. his that's his issue you know everyone has their, every politician has their own stupid agenda like i'm gonna take real issue with graffiti yeah, exactly. because that's this the biggest problem his name on the wall right in now. front of my building i think i think there's some politicians that's, out there with, with non-stupid agendas but oh no i'm just being angry okay yeah <laughs> it's down the new the year yeah, we're, we're angry in the new, new year i'm not you can be i'm angry. gonna get elected to city council that's what i'm gonna do and then you know what i'm gonna do what are you gonna implement do? why bro <laughs> <laughs> why bro because Did Gavin Newsom promised that one. It's going to use he the Wi-Fi internet. For the entire city it's going to use the internet to get us some za and some chose. All right, dude. And dude. You, I think we should go back and count. We're almost up to like episode number twenty-five of the hotspot. By the way, we've been doing this for like five or six months now. Sure. Dun, 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 dun. We've been doing it since July. But uh, UA Bowl, <laughs> UE Bowl. Is that how we say no, 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 it? No, no, no. We, can we a guy wrote me. A guy wrote me. Yes. What do you say? Uve. Uve. That's what a guy wrote me and said. You can say Uve. What do you want to say, Jeff? Ew. All right. And Brad, I will say Mr. Bowl. I will say Ooey Bowl. <laughs> uh, his latest film came out, Blood Rain, and it is a debacle. According it's to it's a Barai. disaster debacle. It, it is, it is a, yeah, it's not good. Really? Yeah, you're kidding me. Yeah, here. Well, here's the thing. We're not even talking about how bad the movie is. We're talking about how it's distributed. A Variety reported that this movie, uh, Blood Rain, based on your, the game of the same name, which independent distributor Romar had had said will be shown on more than 1,900 screens at first debut. debut only showed up on 985 Oops. and um, it's a debacle because that hundreds of prints of this movie were sent to exhibitors who didn't ask for them and refused to show them so awesome. is it hundreds or is it thousands because i heard there were like five thousand extras a well, variety said hundreds okay but... there, there seem to be conflicting reports on this well what doesn't make sense is there are ads all over san francisco yeah. everywhere you look and I think what's what's really awesome too is that like it just further proves my own personal agenda about how video games unrealistically portray women. Yeah, because as you vampire try to killers. Put, exactly. Nazi vampires. You, know, you, don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't kill vampires at night? Or sometimes. But, but, no, uh, I'm just, but I'm just, you know, like you can't even make uh, the beautiful actress look even as good as a video game. Like I just think there's something. Christina Loken you're talking about? Is that, her, is that who it is? Chris, yeah. Christina Loken. Christina, or Christina. Christina. I, think it's, I think it's Uwe oh, yeah. Loken. She's, she's beautiful and she looks, she looks terrible in this movie. But, uh, uh, yeah, well, the whole so movie So the movie made $1.2 million. Billy Zane looks terrible in this Billy movie Billy Zane too. never looks terrible. This, this, hey. take it this back. is the great subplot of all this. Is news of Blood of Wayne's woes must come as a shock to Billy Zane who once said that Bull, quote, has totally made his mark and put his naysayers and critics to rest with this film. 
Uh, but then uh, you got to know that Billy Zane is a partner in the upstart distributor Romar, which had all these problems distributing the movie. Yeah, anyways. so I, I guess the story with these prints, like just showing up, is, th- is they literally just arrived at movie theaters. And uh, I, I know a couple of theaters. Uh, I know some people in the movie. Yeah, friends, the friends, friends of GameSpot. Um, mm-hmm. And um, they got prints of the movie just kind of out of the blue, and they can't show them without a schedule, without a booking. It's like it's illegal to show movies if you don't have a booking form because then really? you. Because then you don't kick money back to the the company that made it and all this stuff. So to me, it almost seems like they, you know, they came out and said it'll be on 1900 screens. Don't worry, and they had to guarantee that somehow. Um, and then probably just couldn't get enough theaters to take it, so they just sent them out to, to like fulfill some kind of crazy contractual obligation. Though that is expensive as hell. Is it just making prints of a movie and, and distributing them? That it's pricey. Awesome. It's, it's pricey. It's almost as if these people are like exploiting a tax loophole or something. Yeah, it's almost I mean, as if yeah. German no. tax law is being. Exploited. No, not like that's ever happened before or anything, yeah. but you, who knows? There have been that rumors, by the way. Look those up in GameSpot. German tax loop. Run a search. You'll find Uweebo. I saw German tax loop the other night. Uh, those guys were pretty good. Their bass player is really hot. <laughs> Did the freezer suits open for them? <laughs> yeah, the freezer suits were playing and, and uh, Late Night Savage. Those yeah. guys, they're all, pretty, they're all pretty sick. Uh, yeah. they're, they were better with their old league guitars. Yeah, 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 you're right. Well, that's going to do it for another ish edition of The Hot Spot. Uh, Carrie, Brad, Jeff, thanks for stopping by. Any final comments? You've been super great, Rich. Thanks. I would recap, but this show has been long. Let's just, let's just kill it now. Shaka. So we, yeah, we didn't really talk about anything anyway. <laughs> we talked about a lot of stuff. We'd like to thank you for listening, and we'll catch all of you next week right here on The Hot Spot. For more on this or other stories from the world of video gaming, check out GameSpot.com. <laughs> <laughs>